Okay, let's get started. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Stout. I am uh, what they call a developer evangelist for Cisco DevNet. Uh, that means me and uh, a couple of other uh, developer evangelists um, that work for Cisco uh, uh, essentially do everything we can to help developers uh, around the world uh, use Cisco APIs, especially uh, in the area of collaboration that I focus on. Um, so we help with uh, uh, building the developer uh, websites and portals. Uh, we help build, sam build sample code. Uh, learning labs, uh, training scenarios, uh, and come to events like this to meet with developers, um, get them excited uh, about uh, the capabilities, uh, the things that they can build on top of Cisco platforms, uh, and to help and encourage them uh, to do just that and make us all a little bit of money <clears throat> at the end of the day. Uh, in this session today, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, bots. Uh, so you might have an idea of what bots are. I'm going to elaborate on that just a tiny bit and then talk about some of the uh, architectures, tools, uh, examples, and so forth uh, that I've been working with over the last year uh, in, in conjunction with Cisco Spark. <clears throat> so we'll talk. Uh, just briefly about what chatbots are and why they're helpful. Uh, demo a few mostly simple uh, bots that you can actually go out and get for free right now on depot.cisco.com. Talk about how you can use bot accounts um, in simple notification scenario scenarios for uh, chat ops, DevOps kind of, kind of situations with just a few lines of code or by integrating to uh, developer or uh, system management uh, consoles uh, that can take advantage of uh, an easy to use, easy to consume REST APIs that Spark provides. <clears throat> the uh, kind of the next level is uh, uh, what, what we call controller bots. Uh, so these are bots where you can actually type commands into the Cisco Spark client that you might have on your mobile device. Um, those commands are interpreted by an application, a bot application that you can write. Uh, and then it goes and does something interesting on the back end. It may uh, compile a report uh, and paste that in as a CSV, CSV file or a spreadsheet uh, into the room where all your sysadmins are, are hanging out. Um, it may uh, give you updates um, based on a particular host you want to look at, uh, et cetera. Bot assistants <clears throat> take it to the next level. So these are interactive. These are kind of the chat bots that uh, you may uh, be familiar with. Uh, you know, a bot is, uh, you know, one of these chat bots is uh, essentially an application with a personality. It's uh, designed to be spoken to, interacted with uh, in human language or near human language. And depending on what uh, technologies you can hook up to it, uh, artificial intelligence, natural language pro uh, processing, uh, et cetera, uh, you know, uh, things like the, the Google search bot and Siri uh, are kind of the, the far end of what you can do. Um, and those things are not that far away when building Spark uh, bots today. And then we'll talk about some of the architectures that you'll run into, some of the challenges, uh, and then some of the extensive tool set that's available to you guys for building bots. <clears throat> uh, so I was an IRC guy from way back. Um, when I started working uh, for Cisco and in the businesses before, uh, the really this was missing. This was a missing piece of collaboration. We did a lot of stuff in email. We passed a lot of paper. Uh, we had you know lots of voice calls. Not so much video until recently, um, recent years in Cisco. <clears throat> Chat was kind of a an open area. Uh, like I said, IRC was the big solution uh, for developers and uh, people that uh, you know ran. Uh, game clans and so forth. Uh, but there were a lot of downsides to it. It was insecure. You couldn't really use it for business purposes or government purposes. Didn't, it wasn't persistent. Uh, so you couldn't uh, um, pick up the messages wherever you were on any device. Spark definitely changed all that and has turned uh, chat um, and messaging and persistent messaging uh, into a top-notch uh, <coughs> business tool. Uh, I suspect that I, I spend more keystrokes uh, in chat rooms now than I do on email, and that's uh, continuing to increase. 
So chatting with people is fine. Uh, chatting with your colleagues, your boss, etc., customers uh, can make sense when uh, you don't have the, the time to focus on a face-to-face a -face conversation over video or voice. Um, but it needs to be a little quicker, more uh, interactive than email. <clears throat> Why do you want chatbots? Uh, why can't we just build web applications or mobile applications or native apps uh, where people can get to data and interact with programs? Well, those things aren't going away. They're still great. Uh, for particular use cases, they're the perfect way to do things. Uh, but there are situations and use cases where a chatbot makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> a lot of it has to do with integrating automation and applications right where people are talking. Uh, so uh, in a Spark chat room, in a Slack room, something like that, people are talking amongst each other. Why not have applications join the conversation, right? So people can talk to apps. App can, apps can talk to people. Uh, people can upload uh, files to applications. Um, uh, bots can post files into rooms. It's all collaboration, not amongst p only people but uh, amongst uh, solutions. Uh, and this is where I think it makes the most sense and uh, is, is the most interesting. There are times when it's convenient. <clears throat> if you're in a Spark room, for example, if you're a sysadmin or uh, you're responsible for uh, a bank of servers uh, or networking equipment, uh, you're chatting with your colleagues, a problem comes up, uh, it'd be nice to have a bot. <clears throat> where if a server goes down or a link uh, is uh, flapping, uh, you can get a notification right in the room. People can start talking about it. Uh, that notification from a bot can have a link or a report uh, that you can immediately start digging in. Uh, it's just very useful uh, to have that. You don't have to switch to another application. Obviously, this is a rapidly expanding paradigm uh, across all kinds of markets. Everyone else is doing it. Why not, uh, why not you? Chatbots are uh, quickly gaining in popularity. Uh, for me, I've been an old uh, command line guy uh, since the uh, since the early days. Uh, there are just certain tasks where nothing beats it. Um, and uh, to me, this has a lot of flavor of, of uh, the new command line, uh, where you're issuing commands in a chat room, interacting with an application via text. Sometimes it makes sense. Um, the the great news for developers these days is there's lots of open open source, free tools, uh, frameworks, bot kits, et cetera, uh, that you can just uh, essentially drop into your solution, uh, change a few parameters on, uh, add some custom code uh, to do what you want uh, without having to reinvent the wheel. And that's kind of what my team is about, is uh, bridging the two. So let's take a look at a couple of simple bots. <clears throat> this site is DevNet Creations. Uh, this is a collection of uh, sort of proof of concept uh, application solutions across a number of Cisco technologies, not just collaboration or Spark, um, but uh, it's a great place to look for kind of the, the cutting edges as uh, far as what's possible with new Cisco APIs. Uh, one of the example <coughs> solutions on DevNet creations is uh, the DevNet events box. So, this essentially is just a chat bot. It's a Cisco DevNet at sparkbot.io. All right, free to use. All you have to do is make this a little bigger. Send a one-to-one -one message to that bot, right? So type in uh, Cisco DevNet bot at sparkbot.io, you're in a one-to-one -one room essentially with an application. So you can ask for help. There's a number of commands it supports. So if we want to see uh, what DevNet events are happening now, we just do a slash now command. This bot is uh, hosted on Heroku, as I understand it. It actually uses uh, another web API uh, that's hosted on the DevNet site. Uh, so it goes uh, checks the database uh, of all the Cisco events that are happening around the world. Uh, so this is what's happening recently, DevNet Zone in Berlin on the list. So uh, as you can see, it's pretty easy to interact with this particular bot. 
Uh, you do know, have to know the commands kind of exactly. When I typed, typed help earlier instead of slash help, didn't know what I was saying. This is a kind of a basic bot. Proof of concept. Let's take a look at the Spark Depot. Depot.ciscospark.com is similar to DevNet Creations, but this uh, is evolving more into a marketplace. Uh, so if you go and browse here, there are, uh, I think, well over 100 different integrations to various services, third-party applications, uh, box.com, GitHub, uh, et cetera, uh, including a pretty nice collection of, it, of uh, some uh, more and some less uh, actually useful bots. Uh, the GIF bot doesn't uh, add a lot of productivity <laughs> to anything. Uh, but you can essentially use all of these for free, I believe. Um, <clears throat> for example, the meme bot. It's pretty cool. So in this case, we're going to issue uh, sort of a multi-part command. It's going to include uh, some words that we want to say at the top of the picture, a comma, some words that we say, want to say at the bottom, uh, a pipe symbol, uh, and then a reference to a particular meme image. So if you're not up on how uh, your latest uh, and greatest memes, there's a link here that uh, you can go and take a look at what they are. There we go. <clears throat> so what happens is this application goes to uh, the internet meme database, downloads the picture, uh, generates and superimposes the text on top, and uh, post it right back into the room for you to preview. So we have this bot hanging around a lot of our team rooms. It comes in very helpful to ease the tension. On a little more productive side is the to-do bot. Uh, this bot is uh, essentially a task uh, management system. Uh, so you can define tasks, you can assign them to people, uh, you can add them, remove them, manage them, uh, all within a task, all within a Spark room, uh, for example, with other folks. So let's see. I have this running in one of my rooms here. There we go. So if you have a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one room with this bot, <clears throat> there's some private things you can do with it. Um, you can get a list uh, of all the tasks that are assigned to you or to others in here. Uh, if this, this bot has been added to a room, there are several things to, you can do. So if you're in the middle of a conversation, in the middle of a chat in this Spark room with a bunch of other people, um, and as frequently happens, uh, uh, the action items are being handed out fast and furious. You can assign them uh, as as you go. Uh, file the TPS reports, and let's give that task to this guy. Okay. So the bot looks at this command. <clears throat> oh, I need to create the task first. <clears throat> So 
So the bot has parsed this uh, command. Uh, we mention the bot to make sure that it can hear us. It gets the command directly sent to us. We use the create command, gave it a couple of uh, words as a parameter as to what we want to create, uh, and used another mention at the end of the message to uh, assign that to someone. <coughs> so there's a, a web-based UI then where you can go and look at these tasks, uh, or you can manage them right in the room. You can uh, remove them, uh, reassign them to somebody else, uh, et cetera. All right. <clears throat> so in the scheme of things, bots uh, start simply and uh, kind of go up the chain of, com chain of complexity and uh, power and flexibility. Uh, some of the simple things that you can do with uh, bots and bot accounts on Cisco Spark um, are things like notifications. So typically, this is a one-way communication, uh, some sort of back-end system, <coughs> uh, a server, uh, a network management uh, and monitoring tool, uh, a cron job, anything like that can uh, make a simple uh, REST request usually using something like curl uh, or a little bit of Python code <coughs> to send messages into chat rooms right where people are. These are real simple to build, right? Anything. Anything that can make an HTTP post, whether this is an IoT device, a mobile phone, a browser, PC application, <coughs> your refrigerator, anything like that uh, is, is going to be able to make an HTTP post if it's connected to a network. Uh, and anything like that can interact with people, give them notifications, information about what's going on. The Cisco Communications Manager engineering team, that whole giant organization that works on uh, code for communi communications manager and other stuff in collaboration, which is something I've uh, worked on supporting for many years, they actually converted their whole DevOps flow uh, and integrated uh, code repository notifications from GitHub with Jenkins, at, uh, Ant, uh, so that uh, essentially all of their daily builds are hooked into Spark right where their developers are. Uh, so if a daily build uh, has an issue, uh, it automatically creates a, a new uh, issue in GitHub, parse something, uh, posts something in a Spark room, assigns it to somebody, uh, and people start discussing it, right? There's a link that you can click on uh, to open up a browser where uh, all the detail in, in one of these back-end uh, back systems is available. Uh, but it's a really powerful tool to help them uh, get more in touch with their systems, uh, to interact with them, um, and to keep up to date with, with what's going on. Uh, sysadmins, network administrators, like I said, alerts, status updates, uh, new tickets coming in uh, on a ticket uh, handling system. Uh, it's real easy. Uh, if any of these things can run an, uh, a bash script, run a shell script, uh, or can otherwise uh, make a rest request, uh, you can hook them up to a Spark room for notifications. <laughs> good example of a notica notification only bot uh, is Fabian. Do I have him on my favorites? I don't think so. The Fabian bot <coughs> is uh, built and maintained by the Spark, uh, Spark team, essentially the PR folks. Uh, if you go ahead and send a, set up a one-on-one -on -one message with this guy, he'll keep you up to date in real time as uh, the latest and greatest news about the Spark platform and APIs uh, are made. So if you are using Spark, interested in Spark, maintaining it, uh, it's a great way right in the tool where you're doing a bunch of other work uh, to keep up to date with what the new features are in Spark. So let's just take, uh, I think I have up here some code of a simple notification script. <clears throat> so this is a few lines of Python that you can use to send a message to a room. Very simple. In this case, we're using a library that uh, gives us the uptime of the particular server that this is running on. We create a JSON body. That includes the unique room identifier of the Spark room where we want to send this, and then the message. In this case, it's going to be the uptime string. Some headers, which includes the authentication token, the access token, 
uh, of the bot account that we're going to use to post this message. And then right here, we use the request library to post that message to the API location on Cisco Spark uh, Cloud. So you can put this in a .py file. You can uh, set this up to run uh, as a cron job every hour, every 24 hours, include additional servers and loop through them. Um, you can uh, you know, check for date and time uh, differences and if any of the servers have bounced in the last 24 hours. You can send that no notification into a room right with your sysadmins. Just a few lines of code. Bots that do two-way communication can be control systems. So uh, when you do a notification, you're essentially sending an HTTP request from wherever you are upwards to the Spark cloud. That works great. <clears throat> it's just like a web browser. You send a request, you get a response. Uh, for two-way notifications, so if you want an application to receive a message as if it was a person. So if someone posts a message to a Spark room, you want your application to receive a notification, an event, uh, that that message uh, occurred. The messaging has to go in the other direction, right? So firewalls, NATs, network security, uh, all that stuff is kind of designed not to let in random inbound requests come and interact with systems. So you need to do a little work sometimes to make sure that uh, you're application is accessible to the internet if it's sitting inside your firewall. So <clears throat> with these kinds of solutions, you can have uh, not only notifications that something went wrong, uh, but they, then you can respond to that notification system, that application, and ask for more detail, for example. Um, if a particular server is running at 100% CPU and you get an alert, you can perhaps type a command back to that bot that says, hey, go ahead and kill process X, or go ahead and restart the box. Uh, your application gets that command, uh, gets that notification message from the start cloud, uh, runs the commands on the back end uh, to restart the, the server if that's what you want to do. Um, pretty easy, as long as you can get an inbound network request. Uh, an example of sort of bi-directional script. This is the two German bot. I'll try that out. Uh, this is a bot that does uh, essentially on-demand translation. Um, so I'm about to type a message into this box. When I do, my client sends that message up to the Spark Cloud. <clears throat> this bot has registered what's called a webhook. This is uh, essentially an interest, a, note, a subscription to this particular room actually to any room probably for this bot, Cisco Spark says, hey, <clears throat> new message came into this room. Are there any subscriptions that uh, are, are attached to this room? Yep. One is for the Spark bot. So it sends a message to wherever this guy is hosted. And I have no idea where. <clears throat> but this application gets access to uh, the message that I sent to it. What's the time? I actually mistyped it. <laughs> <laughs> Translated it anyway. So that's uh, an example of a little more detail about how an interactive bot works. So beyond interactivity, <clears throat> sort of like the command line for chat, um, when you get into real assistance, uh, intelligent assistance, uh, that's where it starts to get really cool. Uh, as we, we talked about before, these are two-way communications. Uh, these are applications that can receive messages, they can send messages, they can interact with other systems on the back end. Uh, but these can be augmented with additional APIs, external services, uh, as well as uh, advanced 
things like uh, natural language uh, pro uh, processing, um, AI services like Watson and API.ai. These are uh, technologies that can allow the bot to be flexible in the way you talk to it. They're designed to allow you to uh, make requests, ask for additional information in human language. Uh, not everyone is going to ask the same thing in the same way. Uh, and these technologies uh, can take a whole body of uh, requests and variations, uh, multiple languages, uh, and using artificial intelligence and uh, NLP, uh, boil that down to really identify what people want, and then hand that off to your application in a nice packaged uh, sort of uh, logic uh, processable uh, format uh, so that you can take it and do the right thing with it. <clears throat> We're doing pretty good on time here. I may go and try to do something at api.ai here. So api.ai is a pretty cool platform. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and sign in. that has a very powerful artificial intelligence engine mm. artificial intelligence engine married uh, into uh, a hosting platform, as well as a pretty cool uh, user interface, browser-based, uh, web-based interface for defining um, natural language processing interaction um, and concepts. Apologize, it's a little small. Uh, what we can do here is uh, create what's called an agent. Uh, an agent is intended uh, to encapsulate a, a particular uh, workflow in API.ai. So let's call this test agent two. What we're going to do at this point, <clears throat> once the agent is created, uh, is create what's called an intent. So the, what we're going to show here is a reminder bot. So this is a bot that you can ask to, uh, ask to be reminded of something. Um, maybe you want to wake up at a particular time. Um, maybe you want to be uh, you know, reminded of something at noon. What we have to do is kind of train API.ai to recognize you know, what people are going to be asking uh, in this particular intent, how they might ask it, uh, and then try to parse out the pieces of that. So we're going to give it two or three examples. Wake me up at 6 AM. Create a mind reminder for noon. Uh, remind me to go to the doctor at 3 p.m. <clears throat> if you notice here, the system does a pretty good job of recognizing times. So it's uh, marked these with the system time entity. And really, for a reminder, that's all we need. And for, that's exa for this example, that's all we have time for. Um, so if you look at each of these in turn, uh, it's doing a pretty good job of parsing out the time. Well, let's create a new action. This is the remind action. Uh, anytime we want to be reminded of something, we definitely need to know what time. If not, we want to say, what time do you want to do that at? So 
So we can give it an alternate prompt. Finally, once the, bot, once the API.ai has parsed what the user intends to do or intends to ask for, uh, we want the system to give a response. <clears throat> if we look at the action, the time that gets parsed out of the uh, user requests is captured in this variable called dollar sign time. So we can use that, insert that into the response just like this. And save it. So what's cool uh, about the system is that right over here, there's a try and now. So you can test as you develop. Make sure that uh, the right things are happening. So let's try wake me up at 6 AM. Okay. Over here, you can see it says, sure. I'll set a reminder for what's a not very well formatted time, uh, but it definitely got the right time. All right. So what if we say, wake me up at 10 AM? OK, so that's not one of the things that we typed in directly. It's a variation. Again, the system was able to recognize that, uh, parses out the time correctly, and puts the intent that the user wanted uh, together with the actual specifics that the user gave us. So let's try one more variation. Uh, get me up at noon. So that's not a whole lot like uh, any of the things that we trained it on. Uh, but the system is smart enough to go ahead and parse that, uh, identify it as matching the intent that we've defined here, pulls out the time, does the right thing with the response. So API.ai has a direct integration with Cisco Spark. We can turn that on and uh, go to the Spark developer page. And what we're going to do is create a new bot account. <clears throat> now, anybody that uses Spark can create a bot account. If you're, on a, if you're free, if you signed up for free, you can create bots. right under here, under My Apps. Going to create a new bot. You can also do uh, single sign-on OAuth integrations, but make sure you click on Create a Bot. Let's give it a display name. This is the DStout Reminder Bot. Now, we do have to give this guy an icon URL. Let's see if this is going to work. Mm. I should have had my. GIF URL or my, uh, let's, let's go get a kitten URL off the web somewhere. <clears throat> cool. That should work. So essentially, all you need to do is give it a name. You need to create uh, a Spark user ID for it. 
So this bot will be known as dstout reminder bot at sparkbot.io. And you can add this bot into any room you want. You can do a one-on-one -on -one session with it. The key, however, is uh, the access token. This is a unique identifier for this bot account. Um, and applications like API.ai are going to use that access token so that they can uh, act on behalf of this bot. OK. So bot was started. <clears throat> cool. That means API.ai has actually spun up a little microservice uh, that includes the user definitions, all that data that we trained the bot on. Uh, it includes uh, a little running service that listens for incoming uh, notifications of events from the Spark Cloud. Um, and when that happens, it's going to execute the analysis and uh, post a response, hopefully. So let's go test it out. I'm going to create a new one-on-one -on -one room with this bot. I get to get up really early for the airplane. Boom. API.ai is serving reminder bot. That took about 10 minutes. Now, obviously, nothing's going to happen after this. We didn't create a reminder. We didn't store it in a database. There are no processes to check when reminders are due and send them back to the real people. That's where this fulfillment page comes in here. So uh, <clears throat> you can turn this on. Uh, API.ai will send a webhook, a notification uh, to your backend process uh, with some nicely formatted JSON that tells you exactly what the, what the uh, user uh, said they wanted to do, right? They wanted to do a reminder. They wanted to get reminded at this particular time, as well as any other things that it was able to parse out of that request. Then your application can do the database store. It can do the cron job to, to check uh, for reminders are due. Uh, and then maybe use the Spark API to send reminders into rooms where people need them. So pretty cool service. So let's talk briefly about the architecture and tools. Um, like I showed you, uh, depot.spark, ciscospark.com is a great place to go find some bots to adopt, give them a try get inspired as to what uh, you can do. Uh, a lot of them are a little silly, uh, but there are some useful ones there. Uh, but they do show you what's possible, and that's kind of the idea. If you want to build your own, <clears throat> it's not terribly hard. At least we hope not. Uh, for something non-interactive, non like that notification script that we showed you, uh, again, it can be four or five lines of code, one curl command in a cron job. All you need to do on the Cisco Spark site uh, is create a bot account, right? So you have that access token. You can paste into the script. You're off and running. If you want something more interactive, you need to write a service, essentially, essentially a web service uh, that listens for incoming web requests, web hooks from the Spark uh, cloud when events happen. Uh, for example, if your bot is added to a room, you can uh, send back a welcome message. If a new message comes in uh, with a command that's targeted for your bot, uh, you want to process that uh, and send a response back into the room. Your bot service has to be accessible to the internet so it can receive notifications from Cisco Spark. Like I said, uh, that can be uh, an issue if you're trying to run uh, services inside the firewall, though there are, there are you know, well understood ways to make exceptions and do that. Um, and then finally, you have to set up a webhook in the Cisco Spark system uh, so that uh, it will notify your bot uh, when events happen, right? You can filter those for particular rooms, for messages from particular people, for particular kinds of events. Uh, you can filter that down as needed so that your bot uh, only wakes up uh, when certain things happen. Creating a Spark bot account is easy. We saw that already. Anybody can do it. Writing code uh, for incoming web hooks. Essentially, this is a web server, right? All those good web uh, server microservices, uh, serverless uh, HTTP 
uh, frameworks, platforms, hosting services, code, templates, libraries, all of that stuff, uh, if you're familiar with it or your devs are familiar with it, they can use it. Uh, they should be very familiar with what webhooks are um, and how to interact with REST uh, APIs. <clears throat> uh, even if you don't want to write any code at all, uh, there are services like built.io, uh, Zapier, Stamplay, et cetera, that provide uh, you know, sort of a drag and drop graphical interface uh, for creating applications that uh, connect various services on the web, including Cisco Spark uh, and Spark bots. Uh, so you can build uh, a simple one-off bot that does something interesting with another service uh, like uh, Google Calendar um, or uh, uh, you know, SurveyMonkey uh, so that uh, you don't have to write a single line of code and you can still take advantage of these uh, kind of services. There are some dedicated bot hosting services uh, that we have worked with. Uh, Gupshop.io has a ni nice platform, uh, zenbot.org. Uh, some of the cool things about this, so they are cloud-based, uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, uh, getting those networking or getting those incoming webhook messages through your firewall because it's a cloud hosting service. Uh, they also provide nice controls, reports, uh, easy to use frameworks, uh, so that uh, it makes the takes all the pain out of it, lets you focus on just the code that you want to uh, to build. Bot frameworks taking it down a little. Um, if you don't want to write directly to HTTP um, uh, requests and REST, there are bot frameworks, including uh, the uh, fairly famous BotKit uh, that was originally uh, developed for Slack. Uh, Cisco just announced uh, a direct integra integration with that technology, um, uh, and a couple other uh, frameworks in various languages that you can just uh, give to your, for example, Java developer, uh, where they can use this technology uh, without having to uh, learn it from the ground up. So on GitHub, we have uh, a page uh, called Awesome, System, awesome Cisco Spark uh, that collects uh, a lot of these links. Um, definitely encourage you to take a look through there. It gets uh, updated rapidly. Um, DevNet itself at developer.cisco.com. Uh, we have learning labs. Uh, we have events, training uh, events, DevNet Express, uh, we'll, where uh, you can work with these technologies uh, step by step, interactively, uh, online at home, uh, or with us at a live, ev live event like this. If you really want to, uh, like I said, this is all basic web technology. Uh, Node.js, Python, uh, your developers uh, should, be easy, should be able to easily consume this stuff and use it. Uh, so we talked about this a little bit. <clears throat> Hosting services are a great way to go. Uh, AWS, Azure, uh, Gupshup.io, all of those can host your bot in the cloud, making it uh, easily accessible to Spark um, and uh, keeping, uh, keeping you from worrying about having to do things like create custom domains and DNS and uh, CA certificates, configuring your firewall, all that stuff. But if you do, if you have a system inside your corporate network that needs to get notifications from Spark so it can work interactively, um, you, know, you can conf configure these things safely uh, with a DMZ uh, and all that uh, to get it done. A couple of tools that I use uh, in development phase uh, or just to show people uh, how Spark bots work without having to set up all this stuff uh, or you know, buy uh, AWS services and con configure all that. Uh, our NGROC and local tunnel. And uh, we're running short on time. Uh, can't look at those in too, too much detail. But essentially, they are web-based services that have a small agent that you can run on your uh, PC, creates a virtual tunnel uh, that makes it look like your application is exposed on the internet. So you, you'll be able to easily receive uh, webhooks from Spark uh, without having to uh, you know, be hosted in the cloud or mess with firewall uh, transitions. Uh, Built.io, we talked about that briefly. Uh, just a picture of uh, what's a fairly complicated bot that uh, mashes up uh, Spark, HTTP requests. Uh, you can even do a little custom Node.js, um, but all drag and drop. We talked about the boat bot hosting services. Screenshot from uh, gupshop.io. <clears throat> we talked about webhooks. So putting it all together, it's going to look uh, something, something like this. 
Spark clients. These are on your PC, on your mobile phone. Someone posts a message intended for your bot application. That message is sent up to the Cisco Spark cloud. <clears throat> Cisco Spark has, says, hey, we've got a webhook subscription uh, for this particular bot. So they send a message then down to your application, which processes it and you know, probably sends a response. Maybe not. Uh, but uh, all the cool stuff that you guys develop will be down there. And I think that is all I have. So uh, any, any questions from the audience? Is this all something you're mostly familiar with? Or anybody planning on building any bots? Maybe? <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks for hanging out. Uh, have, have a nice afternoon. I'll, I'll be around for a couple minutes after the session. Thank you.